Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to this latest weather and climate update with an outlook into fall 2021. This is Alex Tardy, meteorologist with National Weather Service. Here's a look at a lot of different numbers, but the water year is over. 2020 to 2021 water year. Take a look at a location closest to you, mountain, desert, or along the coast or our interior valleys. All areas much below average for the water year. Some areas, especially along the coast and mountains, were in the top 10 for driest on record. What did it look like on a map? The water year 2020-2021, you can see Southern California stood out as very dry. All areas, mostly less than 50% of average with the exception being parts of San Diego County, slightly wetter. Also an area in Northern California, very dry, 50% or less of the annual average. Let's take a look at the water year, also on a map with different color scale. You can see across all of California, it was in the deep red or less than 50% of average a little bit better in San Diego County and parts of Central California, thanks to an atmospheric river in Central California. Temperatures were very warm, especially in the mountains and deserts. You can see several degrees on average for the water year 2020-2021. Coastal areas were near average, especially in Southern California. If you look at temperatures for the same period, water year 2020-2021, you can see the mountain areas and the deserts across all of California significantly above average. Again, the mountain areas and the desert areas were much above average for the water year. That is a strong indication of limited and quick melting snowpack across our mountain areas. Now let's take a look at monsoon 2021. On the left-hand side is precipitation, right-hand side is temperature you can clearly see in areas that typically see the monsoon in the deep southwest and parts of the Great Basin, it was much above average in Arizona, very wet. Parts of Southern California also wet from the coast to deserts thanks to a couple periods of thunderstorms during the period June through September. Temperatures were very warm and they were much above average across the mountains and interior deserts. If we look over the last 90 days, here's what it looks like for the summer or the monsoon period. You can see that the San Diego County area was very wet. Several significant storm systems or thunderstorms occurred along the coast. You can also see parts of our mountains and our desert areas were also much above average for precipitation for monsoon 2021. Here's another look at temperatures during the monsoon June through September. Using a different color scale, you can see temperatures clearly much above average across our mountains and parts of the deserts and temperatures near average to even slightly below average along our coastal areas. All of California overall though, including the Sierra Nevada, much above average. If we take a look at the summer in terms of evaporation, we can clearly see the most significant stress due to the very hot temperatures was across Central and Northern California. It is noteworthy across Southern California in our mountain areas, there was quite a significant amount of evaporation, but along the coast, very little, if any. Here's another way of looking at the West or California for summer 2021. At least between June and August, temperatures were record level as shown in the red areas. That included the mountains of Southern California into parts of our deserts as shown here. Large area of record temperatures between the month of June and August or the core of the summer. If we look at precipitation, we can see that across the desert Southwest, again, there were areas that were the wettest on record between June and August, specifically in Arizona, and areas that were in the top 10 in Southern California. Here's a look at specific locations for monsoon 2021. So during the summer of 2021, 
Locations such as Palomar Mountain were very wet, almost four inches of rain, top 10 wettest. We had other areas where Palm Springs saw significant rainfall, but even coastal areas like Oceanside and San Diego, thanks to several thunderstorm events along the coast. Even our inland areas such as Ramona and Escondido saw rainfall and a little bit of rainfall even spilled up towards the high deserts. The rainfall was quite variable this monsoon, which is often the case, but all locations did receive uh, periods of thunderstorms that resulted in significant rainfall compared to average. Is it the worst drought on record? This map here shows, well, in some areas it was. So far, this drought has panned out to be the worst conditions according to the Palmer Drought Index across much of Central and Northern California as shown here. Let's take a quick look at why the weather pattern has brought two years of drought to the north and one year to the south. Well, we can track all the way back to early 2020, uh, blocking upper level ridge of high pressure, pushing the jet stream during that winter to the north. Unfortunately, that continued in 2020, 2021, all the way into the summer as shown in the right hand side. Last year, basically four different storms impacted Southern California and the upper level ridge high pressure just seemed to get stronger as shown here during the period October through May 2020, 2021, pushing most of the storms to the north and to the east. But why so hot? If we look at the recent summer or the period between June and September, we can see that upper level high pressure area remained over the Pacific, but also broke off and enhanced over the Pacific Northwest during the past summer. In fact, unusually strong in that deep red shaded area or persistent dome and heat wave across the West. Some facts, Salt Lake City had 21 days over 100. That's their maximum amount of days recorded. In Palm Springs area, we saw five days over 120, and that ties the record for that area too. Speaking of Palm Springs, take a look at this. 2021 and last year, 2020, set the record 66 in 2020 of days 110 or over. This year, we've seen 46 days. You can see the past several years have had many days over 110. And we look at a location now like Palm Springs, staggering. 2021 is the hottest on record by far. And we mentioned earlier that the mountains and deserts have seen record hot temperatures this summer but it's also a continuation of the entire year. And here's a look at Big Bear, high in the mountains, near 7,000 feet. So far this year, warmest on record, still a couple months ago. How about fire weather conditions? Let's take a look at the fire weather conditions. If we look up north into Orange County, we can see that few moistures are even drier and they remain below average as shown here. If we look at different types, we can see they are significantly below average in Orange County as shown here, especially compared to recent years. So critically dry. If we look at the dead fuel moisture, so not the new uh, growth or the old growth, but fuels just laying around, we can see that during the past summer, they have dipped to record lows and they have reversed and moistened up with cloud cover or recent rainfall. But the problem is that during these warm and dry periods, they have been dipping down to critically record low levels. Now that we're getting into Santa Ana season, let's take a look at what we typically see. Santa Ana season usually peaks out in Southern California in December and January. However, uh, we typically see three to five events as we get into November and December, with a couple of those typically in the severe category as shown here between October and December. 
Speaking of climate, drought, let's look at the water supply in California. Here's where a lot of the water goes in terms of percentage. You may be surprised by the statistics. Groundwater use greatly increases as well during times like now in drought. The cycle of water across California is as this. Most of it comes from snowpack, goes into our canals, and then goes into our reservoir supply for use, agriculture, environmental, or at our home. But we also get local runoff rainfall. We also have recycling and desalinization plants here in Southern California. And then we also have groundwater recharge that contributes to it. A lot of our water is coming through a canal system, either through the Colorado or through the Central Valley Water Project of California. Here's a look at the reservoirs across California. Take a look at Lake Oroville at a record low, 22% of capacity, 36% of year to date. But even in Southern California, Big Bear Lake is down 16 feet. The all-time record is about 18 feet. Lake Mead on the Colorado River system, historical low as shown here, reached late this summer. Some good news is some local reservoirs such as Diamond Valley remain considerably full at 77%. Still have questions about the variability of La Nina and El Nino? Let's take a look further. How are ocean conditions doing? Here's a look at the ocean conditions. As of late September, we can see across the Equatorial Pacific Ocean, we have a La Nina going on, and that's a continuation from last year. Cooler than average sea surface temperatures along the Equatorial Pacific Ocean in the rectangle box. Elsewhere, though, large areas of warmer, warmer than normal, we call them warm anomalies or marine heat waves, in the central northern Pacific, lots of areas that continue to remain above average. A lot of that seems to be attributed to the weather patterns over the past two years. If we zoom up into Southern California, we can see pockets of below average water now present along the immediate coast and offshore pockets of above average. That's kind of been the story of the summer of 2021, uh, where we've had pockets of warm and cool moving around depending on the wind flow and upwelling. All right, let's talk a little about this upcoming winter. It's a La Nina winter is expected. And historically, this is what La Nina winters result in. On the left-hand side, we typically see drier than average conditions in Southern California. But it's important to remember, not all years work directly as a La Nina or El Nino. In fact, look at 2015-16, which was a record strong El Nino. It was drier than average in Southern California. San Diego in particular, our new normal, update in 2020 is 9.79 inches. See how that compares to recent years. You can see that this year is turning out, ending very dry, 5.24 in a week to moderate La Nina. But in weak El Ninos, we've seen wet conditions. In weak La Nina, we've seen dry conditions, record dry. But even in other years where we've had in El Nino, conditions have been dry, such as what we saw back in 2015 to 2016. So the question is, could we see significant rainstorms in Southern California this winter, flooding, damage? And the short answer is yes. Any winter that can happen, regardless of El Nino or La Nina. What's the outlook for the upcoming winter now that we discussed the potential for La Nina, which is already in place? We are expecting warmer than average conditions for this fall and drier than average conditions as we go into the fall. If you also look at the heart of the winter, the prediction is for drier than average conditions over central Southern California and Unfortunately, warmer than average conditions, which really compounds the whole issue of when we're below average on precipitation, as discussed earlier. So what's coming up in the next couple weeks? 
we're looking at an actual wet pattern potential for much of California and below average or cooler than average for temperatures. So an early season storm looks like it's in the making for October in California. If we look a little bit further out for middle of October, same weather pattern, especially wet for Northern California, the Pacific Northwest, but notice cooler and showery weather potential for at least normal precipitation for mid-October, even in Southern California. So what does this mean for the fire outlook? Well, considering the drought year one for Southern California, year two for Northern California, the focus remains at above average activity for Northern California, but average conditions for Southern California so still normal wildfire potential and normal Santa Ana wind potential. Here's some resources if you want to track climate a little more in depth on your own. Recommend looking at the California or the climate resources as shown here. All right, here's a big summary of what we talked about. Record warm June through September in the mountains and deserts. It was wet in some areas, mountains and deserts, very wet for Arizona, Utah monsoon. We had several thunderstorm events on the coast in summer 2021. You might've had some of those at your house, lightning at night and locally heavy rain. Still expected to be warmer though than average for temperatures as we go into fall and winter of 2021, 22. This is largely due to an ongoing La Nina, which is cool, than average water in the Central Pacific. And the winter is predicted to be drier than average because of this. We still can get strong storms in atmospheric rivers though, even in these expected drier La Ninas. The fuel moisture is critically dry. So that is gonna be a factor. And the drought is ongoing year one for Southern California, year two for Northern California. So we do still expect at least normal fire activity. The water year 2020-2021 was very dry for California, 50% or less. The reservoirs are at historical lows, such as Lake Mead on the Colorado, Lake Oroville in Northern California. So this is the first year of drought, as mentioned, for SoCal, but this is back-to-back -back severe drought for Northern California. So drought will continue to be something we're monitoring closely and a significant concern as we go into this winter, especially if conditions turn out to be average or below average for precipitation.